Hello everyone. Today I have something that I think is pretty interesting. I haven't actually seen this anywhere else, so as far as I know I'm the first one to attempt this, but I don't know very much, so that may or may not be true. In any case, what I have in front of me here are two APC Smart UPS 1500s. The one on top I featured in an earlier video series where I converted that one into a 1500 watt standalone inverter. The one on bottom is bone stock, meaning that it's still a 980 watt UPS. Um, the one at the bottom is stock, aside from that I'll be running it off of this battery bank over here, instead of the dinky little internal batteries in it, but uh, otherwise it's unmodified. I have two of them here, and I'll be running them both off of these batteries. You can see that I have uh, two battery cables in parallel, um, with some connectors over here that I'll, I'll plug in to substitute the batteries. So I'll run them both off the same battery bank. I think just about anyone who's owned more than one inverter or more than one UPS has wondered at some point, is there any way that I can connect these together to increase the output capability of them? In this case, I have one on top that is a 1500 watt version with the uh, top cover removed so we can see inside. Uh, the bottom one, is, as I mentioned, is only 980 watts, but uh, I could easily modify that one to be 1500 watts like the top one. And if I put these two together, I could potentially get a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And that would be pretty cool, I think, because 3000 watt sine wave inverters are not that common and they're very expensive. But uh, how are we going to do this? Well, I honestly don't know if it's going to work yet, but we're going to find out. In any case, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is draw you a little picture to show you what I'm planning on doing. There are two basic topologies that can be used to connect two inverters together to double their output capability. One would be series and the other would be parallel. So in the uh, parallel topology, and this is the one that most people want to do, you have your uh, battery over here, whatever voltage it is, in my case it's 30, 24 volts. <clears throat> but uh, you have the output of each, each one has a line and a neutral. These are actually isolated from the input, so there is no such thing as line and neutral until you reference it but that's beside the point here. So you take the neutral of one, connect it to the neutral of the other, the line of one, connect it to the line of the other, and you have your output here. It had 120 volts AC. You would have double the current, but 1x the voltage. So if these were each 1500 watts, you'd have 3000 watts output. The other topology is, uh, per is series, which is basically the same thing. Line neutral, line neutral. But in this case, you connect neutral and line together and send this out. And if you're running on a 120 volt system, this would be 240 volts. You would only have 1x the current, but double the voltage. So you'd still get 3000 watts out of 240 volts, or 3000 watts out of 120 volts this way. <clears throat> this is the method that most people want to use because they don't want to double the voltage. However, this is also very difficult to accomplish uh, from an engineering perspective. You need to have both of them perfectly in phase in order for this to work. Otherwise, if you try to do this with most inverters, you'll end up with zero inverters instead of two like you had before because they'll destroy each other or uh, blow fuses, uh, best case. But uh, some generators and some inverters can do this sort of thing. They're usually the more expensive ones. Um, but this I'm not going to attempt because these were not designed for it and it won't work. However, this method might work. This is what I'm going to try. However, they still need to be synchronized. If they're not synchronized, then you won't end up with a stable 240 volt output. For example, if this one is at 60 hertz and this one is at 59.9 hertz, something slightly different than this one, if they're not perfectly synchronized, you'll end up with an output voltage that very slowly oscillates between 0 volts and 240 volts. It'll still be about 60 hertz, but it'll slowly oscillate between 0 to 240, go back down to 0, back up to 240, and uh, it won't be a usable output voltage. So they do need to be synchronized. A little uh, drawing here of what I mean. Uh, if I can draw this. If you have the uh, output of this inverter up here, the output of this inverter down here, they're both sine waves. They're both 120 volts, peaking at about 170 volts. If they're perfectly in phase, like uh, we'll imagine these two are perfectly in phase, then this one, once it's superimposed on top of this one, will end up doubling the voltage. 
in every case. And you'll end up with twice the voltage, 240 volts AC. If these were shifted and they weren't perfectly in phase, then this peak would correspond to this trough, this trough would correspond to this peak, and you'd end up canceling out, and you'd end up with zero voltage. And that's why it slowly oscillates between 240 and zero, if they're not, in, not perfectly synchronized. So fortunately for me, on these uh, smart UPS models, uh, in fact all APC smart UPSs do this, they have a synchronized mains feature. So you can synchronize them together. <coughs> However, there are, are quite a few catches to doing this, and I'm not going to go into all of them. Um, but uh, I'll just suffice it to say that you have to be careful in how you do this, otherwise you'll still end up destroying them. I'm going to show you how I am going to attempt doing this uh, to get uh, 240 volts out of it. So I need a way to synchronize these units together so that they both oscillate at exactly the same frequency and at exactly the same phase. Otherwise, this strategy will not work. So how do I do that? Well, APC already has uh, some of that built into them. They have a synchronized to mains feature. In this case, I don't want to have the, the, the UPSs synchronized to a, uh, a wall outlet frequency. I want them to synchronize to each other. So I'm going to do that by saying that this one on the bottom is my master, and this one on the top is the slave. I'm going to let the master oscillate at whatever frequency it wants to oscillate at, and this one is going to follow the master. So I need to somehow get that synchronization signal from the, from the master to the slave. And uh, the easy way to do that is to simply take the outlet from my slave, and instead of plugging it into the wall, plug it into the master. That way it'll get synchronization frequency right from the output of this one. That uh, does create another problem, however, because if this one decides that it's getting good input power, and it tries to switch to uh, pass-through mode instead of in the inverter function, then uh, this one will end up being short-circuited because it uh, basically just passes the input of this one straight out the output. And because I don't, and because I have the uh, lines and neutrals uh, kind of tied up in reverse fashion, it will uh, short-circuit the other one and cause major problems. So I want to make sure that my slave is always operating as a slave and that it is always in the uh, inverter function of it and uh, never in pass-through. So I'm going to show you what, uh, how I'm going to accomplish that. Here is the uh, slave UPS, <clears throat> just taking a, a top-down view of it. And uh, I'll come in here on uh, this particular portion of the board to show you what I mean. I looked into uh, a number of different ways that uh, I could potentially force this into inverter mode uh, to prevent it from going into bypass mode, which would short circuit my other, other UPS and uh, potentially be catastrophic. And uh, most of the methods that uh, I investigated caused it to uh, no longer synchronize to the uh, input power signal, and uh, that's no good. I did eventually find uh, one method that uh, will work. This particular IC right here is an analog to digital converter. So it has a, a number of uh, analog inputs that monitors things like battery voltage, um, the output uh, load voltage, the uh, incoming phase of the power, all that sort of stuff, and uh, outputs that to the, uh, the main brain IC over here uh, in digital form. But uh, one of the inputs is uh, the incoming line voltage level. And uh, that ends up going to uh, pin 2 on this IC right there. And uh, if I take that uh, pin 2 and uh, trick it into thinking that the input power voltage is too low, it does operate off of inverter mode. However, it also desynchronizes for mains, so that's no good. What I can do instead is uh, tell it that the input voltage is too high. And uh, if I tell it that the input voltage is too high, it then operates off of inverter mode, but uh, remains it maintains synch remains synchronized to the input uh, input voltage. And uh, basically what I'm going to do to accomplish this is uh, take this pin right here, this little uh, via, solder field via, this is connected to pin 2 of the IC right there. But uh, I'm going to take this via right here and connect that to 5 volts because this is a 5 volt logic IC. And uh, this is the LDO over here, low dropout linear regulator that is powering this IC. Uh, it is filtered through an RC, but 
um, over here somewhere. But uh, that's really unimportant. So I'm just going to take uh, this voltage, 5 volts, um, or maybe I'll take it off of here, I'm not sure exactly, and uh, tie it right here. That way this UPS will always see that the input voltage is too high no matter what it is, and it will never switch to it. So I'm going to give that a try and then I'll get back to you. And there's the jumper that I added that will force this UPS into slave mode while still maintaining its sync to mains capability. And what I mean by slave mode is that it will never go into pass-through mode where it ties the incoming mains to the uh, outgoing power. And it will also never go into boost or buck mode. It will only be in inverter mode. That's the only mode that will be allowed. And that's what I want if I'm going to sync both of these together. Okay, time to test this out in proof of concept form. I have the uh, faceplate off of both of my UPSs so I could plug in my power cables. They're both hooked up to this 24 volt battery bank, which is fused at 60 amps, which should prevent anything catastrophic from happening. Uh, if I walk around to the uh, back here, excuse the mess, I didn't clean it up um, just for, the, for filming this. but So I have the, uh, the output of my top UPS plugged into the, uh, the output. Let's see, what did I just say? The input of the top of the uh, top, the slave UPS, is plugged into the uh, output of the, uh, the bottom, the master UPS. And then I have another cord plugged in here, um, which is just tying the uh, line and the neutral together. So the, uh, let's see, which one is it? The neutral of my master is connected to the line of my slave. And I put, uh, put that connection through this uh, aluminum resistor just in case something goes wrong. Uh, I think it's a 20 ohm resistor, so um, so that way if something goes wrong, it's not a complete short circuit, but uh, you don't expect anything to be the problem there. And uh, then I have some multimeter leads jammed into the back here, but uh, the one that uh, we're going to be monitoring is this one right here. This is monitoring the difference between uh, both of them. So this should be at 240 volts now, because each one is a 120 volt UPS. So. I'm going to uh, turn on the uh, master first. Um, I guess just to demonstrate, I'm going to turn on the slave first with the master off to show you that it does in fact uh, work. To hold the button in until it beeps. Then I have this light hooked up just to show that it is running. So I go over here, my output voltage is 120 volts because the other one is off. And if I look at my uh, output waveform, it is a sine wave but uh, it's not at 60 hertz, it's at 63 hertz. Um, that's because the, uh, I'm running off the slave and the slave has no master signal, so it won't output a clean 60 hertz. It'll be uh, something somewhat different. But let's try uh, booting these up in the proper order. I'll turn the master on first. Yep, yeah, the master's running. Now I will turn on the slave. 240 volts. I'll shut off this light just because it gets in the way of filming. But if we look, monitor the uh, voltage for a while, you can see that it is very solid. 240 volts. That's because the uh, slave is synchronized to the master. They're connected up in series and uh, they will now output uh, 240 volts at 3000 watts. This is the uh, output voltage waveform. Nice clean sine wave. I only have this monitoring uh, one half of the phase, not the whole thing, but it is a nice clean sine wave. And uh, I can turn, uh, turn this load on and off without uh, affecting the voltage. So, it all seems to be working. Um, like I said, this is a proof of concept video, in this case, showing that you can connect two of them together in series. Uh, I'd like to rattle here a little bit, but you can connect two of them together in series and uh, get 240 volts out and double the output capability of them. So, why would you want to do this? Well, this is basically the same power that your house gets. Your house gets two phases of 120 volts, uh, 180 degrees out of phase here in North America, making 240 volts. So I'm doing the exact same thing here. So 
So that means that I get two legs of 120 volts, or I can use uh, 240 volts, just like in a house. So I am uh, probably going to try powering some loads with this in the future. I don't know if my battery bank here can handle 3,000 watts. I know that these cables can't from earlier testing, but uh, I'll have to uh, see if I can scrounge together some different 120 volt loads and some different 240 volt loads and see how that works. But uh, for now, this is going to be the end of the video. I have successfully taken two UPS units, uh, two APC Smart UPS 1500s, connected them together in series to uh, double the output capability. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments, but uh, I'll probably be making another video um, of this nature uh, in the future at some point. So, thanks for watching.